And here we go. Go wait a little bit for some people to pop in and come say hello. How's everyone doing this morning? It is a currently, it is a cool 85 degrees here in Austin, Texas today. Hello. Nice to hear from you. It's probably going to be hotter today. I'm, ex I'm expecting, I'm expecting in the 90s. We're going to give it a couple minutes, wait for more people to show up. Feel free to chat with me if you want. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and go. So let's say we'll give it about another minute before uh, before we get going. If you've seen me do these streams before, you will notice that my bookshelf is empty. And that is because I am moving tomorrow, and that's going to be fun. It's only, it's only going to be 100 degrees here in Austin tomorrow, so that's not going to be miserable whatsoever. Hello, everyone. How's everyone doing this morning? <sighs> Where's everyone coming from? For those of you that are not, America uses 100 and everyone else uses a real system. Uh, it's going to be roughly 38 degrees here tomorrow whenever I, 38 degrees Celsius whenever I have to move. So it's going to be a warm one. Wow. Well, thank you for joining me. I know it's probably late for y'all. It's, it is currently 11 a.m. here in Austin, Texas. So it's not terrible. Today we're going to be doing a really quick, uh, Teaser for my upcoming um, for my upcoming webinar on securing your droplet, which will be held on I'm bad with dates, so on August 27th. So that'll be that'll be pretty interesting. Um, in that webinar, we're going to discuss uh, just the different, a lot of different techniques uh, for securing your droplet for securing your DigitalOcean account. Uh, the goal is to hopefully uh, cover, there's 11 of them in a, uh, that I have a list of. Hopefully I get through those in the webinar time. Today, we're just going to cover uh, three, and we're just going to kind of talk about them briefly, kind of as a little teaser. So, wow, there's people from all over. We have Athens, Greece. We have the Netherlands. We have Syria, Nepal, Brighton. Wow, this is, I hope I said that right, uh, Bhutan, India. This is awesome. It's people from all over the world. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Today's, oh, Argentina. Yay. I, I used to work with, uh, I, I worked with a couple of people from Argentina my last my last job. I, they're really awesome. Um, it's the only, like everyone knows, it's the only place I have any, I know anybody with any connection to. I don't, I don't know anybody from, from all those other awesome places. All places I'm going to go, hopefully I want to go visit. Anyways, today we're going to be talking about securing your droplet. And it's going to be just a quick little, uh, probably 10 minute teaser of what's to come up in my upcoming webinar on uh, August 27th. So be sure to uh, tune in for that. So if you've never met me before, my name is Mason Egger and I am a developer advocate from DigitalOcean. Uh, and oops, uh, my name is, yeah, sorry, Mason Egger from DigitalOcean. If you want to reach out to me and you want to talk to me, uh, may, you can reach out at mason.dev and uh, or at, tweet me at Mason Egger. You can uh, email me at mason.do.co, and I also do a programming live stream on Mondays and Wednesdays on Twitch, uh, Coding with Mason, where I do a lot of open source work and stuff. Lately, I've been doing a lot of Python, probably going to do some Terraform uh, provider work for the because I do help maintain the DigitalOcean Terraform provider. So if you're ever interested, feel free to come and join in, jump in and join me. So the first thing we're going to talk about today for securing your droplet is we are going to talk about SSH keys. This is a big one. Um, if you've ever spun up a droplet in the DigitalOcean uh, dashboard before, you will see that you have the option of using SSH keys or using a password. Um, SSH keys are considered the more secure method for... One second. There is a Labrador who has found his squeak toy, um, and he is making a noise. So SSH keys are the preferred methodology for uh, securing. Usually when you do passwords, like you um, when you use passwords, it's someone just wants to say hello. Okay, I guess that's how we're going to say. 
Sorry about that. Um, so when SSH keys are typically considered more secure for uh, authentication because there's typically more bits. Um, if you use like an RSA RSA key or something, it's typically, it's recommended that you use 4,096 bits for your key. Um, so it's a lot harder to, do, to crack that versus if most people's passwords, let's admit, are typically generally pretty weak. Um, most people don't like using very long passwords. I personally use passwords that are of like, you know, 32 to 64 characters, but most people's I would say fall in the eight to 16 range. And that's a lot less bits than a typical SSH key. So I would say that it's always very a very good idea in your droplet to disable password authentication and use just SSH keys. So I would definitely recommend using that. And in the webinar, we're gonna go over a little bit of how to do that uh, relatively briefly. The next thing that I would highly recommend you using is do, using firewalls. So if you've uh, never used a firewall before, firewalls are essentially ways of filtering and blocking traffic across certain ports. Certain protocols such as HTTP and HTTPS, uh, actually all protocols run across specific ports. You may be used to HTTP, which say runs on port 80, HTTPS runs on port 443 and et cetera. Um, but you may not want people to be able to access certain ports. Like say uh, they might try, you may only want them to access port 80 and you might have a SQL server running on your machine, but that's only for internal use. So there's no reason to even allow that port to be open so people can get access to it. Um, do not let people have access to anything that they don't necessarily absolutely have access to. So we use firewalls to say, okay, this is a web server. I'm only expecting traffic on port 80 and port 443. That, since that is HTTP and HTTPS respectively, that is all the only traffic that I'm going to allow in. Um, I'm not, because then if it's blocked at the firewall level, the connection will either be dropped or ignored relatively quickly, and it won't take up any much more system resources to do that. Um, you can set drop firewalls at two different levels. You can set firewalls at the droplet level itself, where you can use something if you're using Ubuntu like uh, UFW, or if you're using P uh, uh, FreeBSD, you can use something like PFSense. And you can also set firewalls at the DigitalOcean level. DigitalOcean has a firewall product that is free to use for anybody who's using droplets. And you can use a basically a software-defined firewall that happens at our network layer um, to block the traffic in that you don't want. And a lot of people may ask, well, do you recommend one or the other? Um, I recommend it using at least one. You should either decide which one you're going to use and do it. Um, I would say that even blocking traffic off a firewall port takes some compute. So if you can make DigitalOcean do it and use DigitalOcean's firewall and your server never even have to worry about it, hey, that's pretty nice. And I would highly recommend that. Um, if you're being extra secure, there is no re there is nothing against using both. You can totally enable one because then you have redundancy. If for some reason the DigitalOcean one uh, fails, you know I don't know. I to date I don't know if it has ever failed. But we when when we talk about security when we practice security, we always assume the worst case scenario. So if we do assume that maybe one day one of them will fail, the the DigitalOcean one will fail, then it's not a bad idea to have a redundant backup one. So. It's totally up to you, but I would highly recommend uh, using both if you want. You just have to be careful with it because you can, if you misconfigure firewall rules on a droplet, you could potentially lock yourself out of the droplet and then have to use the recovery console. And then the last thing I'm going to talk about today is I'm going to talk about virtual private clouds, which is one of the newer offerings that DigitalOcean has uh, put out. So a virtual private cloud essentially allows you to uh, kind of uh, create your own private data center that will essentially block all traffic outside of it if you configure it so so that way you can create this kind of private network where data can be transmitted across these different IP, ad IP addresses, um, all these internal IP addresses, and the data does not go over the public internet. So it's kind of like having your own little private data center. Um, and it's highly recommended that if you are running more than one droplet, like if you are running a cluster of droplets or a cluster of, just, of, of resources in general, um, to put them inside of the VPC and have them talk across the private network. This, I believe, it will not affect your uh, bandwidth traffic because it's not going out of the uh, DigitalOcean services. I'm pretty sure I could be I could be wrong on that. I'm going to double check and make sure I know that uh, and have an answer to that at my webinar. Um, but also, with it being in private, with, with it being private traffic, you don't have to worry about any of the public internet sniffing it and no, like figuring out what's going on um, and potentially you know having insecure traffic. It just adds another layer of protection. You have now created essentially a um, you created a giant barrier around your around your data center, around your around your droplets, 
and this barrier is basically it just won't let anybody in. It's like a giant, it's like a giant dome or a bubble. It just you know, stuff tries to come in. Unless you allow it in, it won't be allowed in. Um, so that was a quick little teaser for the webinar. That is all I have for today. The webinar is going to be ho held on August 27th um, at, if I remember correctly, it's going to be held at, let me just double check my calendar real quick. I'm on phone. It is at 10 o'clock uh, central time. So that's, that's the time that I'm in. So 11 a.m. Eastern. And I hope to see everyone there. Thank you very much. And I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing.